Adrian Doherty didn't look much like a footballer. Football wasn't his main interest and he preferred to donate his complimentary match tickets as a youth player away. He preferred busking outside the Arndale Centre in Piccadilly. He loved his music, his guitar and found himself more at Bob Dylan concerts than in attendance of Manchester United football matches. After being scouted by Arsenal and Nottingham Forest, he started his apprenticeship at Manchester United. He was a boy from North West Ireland, lost in the big city of Manchester and like George Best before him, cut his apprenticeship short through homesickness. He quickly resumed his time at Manchester United, drawing plaudits from those in attendance, included future Manchester United captain Gary Neville, as well as teammates such as Ryan Giggs and Lee Sharp, and the higher-ups in Eric Harrison and Alex Ferguson. Neville stated that he had a Messi-like ability and there was much debate over who was the better youth candidate, Ryan Giggs or Adrian Doherty. The Doc, as he was known, even made Ferguson's programme notes for a senior squad's match day, such was the allure of the young Irishman. He rose through the ranks of A and B team matches to the reserve and finally, Manchester United's injury crisis in 1991 earned him a deserved spot in the squad. Only for a life-changing knee injury days prior in an A-team match against Carlisle United. It was misdiagnosed, re-injured in a closed season Caribbean tour in the Trinidad and Tobago in June and was finally revealed to be a torn ACL in September. He rushed back to game time in November, re-injuring his knee again. With Andrei Kanchelski signed on the right wing, his position, and the class of 92 coming up from underneath, his days at United were numbered. Surgery on his knee finally came almost a year to the date of the original injury and despite attempts to gain match fitness, Doherty was cut from his contract in the summer of 1993, the summer that Manchester United won their first league title in 26 years. He tried to play a few games for Derry City later that year but he would quickly retire, aged just 20. He was a nomadic man finding himself in the New York music scene one minute and working in a Preston chocolate factory the next, as well as a porter in Galway. In May 2000, he was starting a new life in the Netherlands, in The Hague. However, a freak accident caused him to fall into a canal, and being unable to swim, he subsequently fell into a coma. A month later, a day before his 27th birthday, he died. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly, and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... Adrian Doherty continued playing football. Manchester United's injury crisis of 1991 paved the way for new debutants that winter. Duncan Ferguson made his first team debut at Everton, with Ryan Giggs turning out for the first time in a Cup Winners' Cup tie against Montpellier a couple of days later. While winning the Manchester United that day against Everton in a 1-0 win was Adrian Doherty from the right. The dock came on from the bench, rang rings around the Everton defence and assisted Brian McClare for the winning goal. Manchester United were on the up, having suffered through the first three years of Alex Ferguson's tenure at Old Trafford. That ended with the FA Cup in 1990 against Crystal Palace. The Cup Winners' Cup and the League Cup soon followed in successive seasons prior to the first Premier League season. Doherty had started the League Cup final win over Sheffield Wednesday, as well as coming off the bench to beat Johan Cruyff's Barcelona in Rotterdam. He and Giggs became the talk of Europe. Despite Andre Kanchelskis and Lee Sharp's presence at the club, Doherty and Giggs would retain first team places on a regular basis from 1992 onwards. With two youthful talents out wide, United rode to the first two Premier League titles. Doherty continued to prop up dive bars in and out of Manchester, playing Bob Dylan covers, reading out his poetry and entertaining the masses. Manchester had come alive on and off the pitch. Keen to keep the winning formula fresh and with new signings such as Andy Cole, Roy Keane, Eric Cantona and the class of 92 slowly creeping into the ranks, Adrian Doherty was moved out from the right wing. Not knowing how to handle Doherty and drawing inspiration from George Best and Sir Matt Busby's relationship in the late 60s and early 70s, Ferguson told the Doc, you have free reign at Old Trafford. He popped up on the right, the left and the middle. He came deep to receive the ball from Bruce and Pallister and went long to receive knockdowns from Eric Cantona, the complete player. That complete player on a free roll netted 18 goals in all competitions in the 1994-1995 season. Not enough to grant an embryonic Manchester United side any success, but certainly enough to reach the 90 point barrier and scoop up a second successive League and Cup double. Paul Parker, Mark Hughes, Paul Ince and Andre Kanchelskis were sold. United won a third straight double. Bruce and Pallister left and Cantona shockingly retired, United won a fifth successive Premier League. United were on the cusp of greatness, Doherty took the mantle of United superstar in Eric Cantona's absence in 1995 and so he would take up the mantle of partner to the likes of Cole, Sheringham, Solskjaer and later Ruud van Nistelrooy. United kept winning, there was but a taste in the 1997 Champions League final of further glories. Doherty ran the Juventus backline ragged but an incisive Alessandro Del Piero Bacchio in the second half saw Juventus return the Champions League title. Manchester United wouldn't lose in the Champions League for the next five years. 
Doherty fed off adoration of the crowd like best before him. He scored in Premier League final days when the title was on the line, as in 1999 and the finals of the League Cup, the FA Cup and in 1998, the Champions League final. It was a goal that got the revenge on Juventus, winning the Champions League in extra time. Some say it was even a late contender for goal of the century after Diego Maradona's goal against England in 1986. Doherty retrieved the ball from David May in defence, 11 tiring Juventus legs stood before him. By the time he finished his run beating 6 maybe 7 of them, half of them were on all fours exhausted. Manchester United, after 30 years in the wilderness, were European champions again. And so it continued, into 1999, 2000 and 2001. They missed a year losing to Bayer Leverkusen in a shock away goals defeat in the semi-finals, but quickly returned to win their 6th European Cup on home soil in 2003, weeks prior to Doherty's 30th birthday. United fans were insufferable, Liverpool supporters couldn't even claim they were better in Europe, and then, the doc was gone. He ran out his contract at the club to focus on his music. He would never play football again, but the stands around Old Trafford adorned his name alongside Solskjaer, Giggs, Ferguson and the Busby Babes, in commemoration to one of the brightest careers that Old Trafford has ever seen. Real Madrid, AC Milan and Bayern Munich, all losers, because all of their Champions League crowns were expunged from memory, thanks to the attacking prowess of the Doc, Giggs and Beckham, the new holy trinity. Manchester United winners, because they claimed Champions League success after Champions League success, winning five between 1998 and 2003. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like on this video and subscribe, as it really helps our channel grow. In 2021 we will be expanding our what if scenarios to 4 days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. We will be uploading all of our what if football goodness such as video game reviews and the Naughty's Nostalgia podcast on Wednesdays, Throwback Thursdays, Fantasy 5 side on Fridays and the biography of football on Saturdays. Tier Tuesday has evolved into Ranked, Tuesday's series which ranks the best and the worst of all football. If you have any suggestions for a what if scenario or any other content, please leave it in the comments section or tweet us at whatif underscore YouTube. See you tomorrow.